Welcome to Learn and Love Music. I'm Dwayne Hulbert, and I'm pleased to present this wonderful piece by Frederick Chopin, his revolutionary etude. It's a great piece and very recognizable, but I'm going to give you five tips on how to perform this piece. Some spots that are kind of difficult. I'm going to give you some ideas about how to fix this and how to practice this piece. Before we begin, I want to encourage all of you to subscribe to our channel. We want to see you back again. So let's get started with Frederick Chopin's epic revolutionary etude. Tip number one. Make sure you shape the opening passage in groups of four in the beginning. What I like to do is to stop on each beat, the ones that are accented. So you have something like this in the left hand. <laughs> One of the things that helps that is when you're playing faster, you'll bring out the accents more and you'll lessen the importance of the other notes. Make sure those notes, even though it's marked forte, we're going to play those notes very light and soft so that the accents stand out. So it sounds like this. Tip number two. Make sure when you see a rest in the music that you do a huge lift in your hand. This gives it much more articulation. And what we have in the left hand is this, arpeggios, but in the right hand we have short, long. One of the things that I like to do here is that when I'm working with a student, when I see that rest in this spot, pick up their arm and then drop back down and it makes it much more exciting to have that lift. You put it all together and it sounds like this. Tip number three. When you play the left hand in that same passage, measure 15, we want to make sure that it has a really smooth motion. And I use the fingering that's marked in the edition, which is 5, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 4, 5, 5, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 4, 5, 5, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 4, 5, 5, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 4, 5. And as you develop more speed, you still want to keep that nice counterclockwise motion going. Number four. In measure 29, we have a very difficult passage in the key of G-sharp minor. And in that passage, the left hand has this fingering, starting with the double sharp. It's 5, 4, 2, 1, 5, 4, 2, 1, 5, 4, 2, 1, 3, 2, jump. And one of the things that I do is I make sure that when I practice, I practice them in those four notes groups across the beat. So I do something like this. I like that kind of quickness. It teaches you how to group the notes in the pattern that they're flowing in. In other words, there's four, four notes going up, and then four notes going up, four notes going up, four, four notes going up. And you want to make sure that you do those fast drills. So when you play fast, and then, then it goes backwards. Instead of going up this way, we have to go up. sort of a circular motion going counterclockwise in a high position and going back up and then a high position. So it's always important to figure out what is the most smooth of technique to use for those groups of notes. And finally, tip five. In measure 55, we have a rolled chord with an eighth note rest. And remember from before, anytime you see an eighth note rest, you want to lift up. And so what we do here is because it's such a big chord on the downbeat of 55, I use the fingering one, two, five, four. And you just practice that so you can... And you have a nice smooth motion for that. Of course, the pedal's down and you have to make sure it's accurate, of course, but we want to get that kind of sound.
always remember once I heard the great pianist Arthur Rubinstein play. He did a Chopin recital. I was only about maybe uh, 14 or 15 years old. And one thing I noticed, you could always see in big jumps and rest, Rubinstein brought his hands up in the air. I suppose we don't need to put our hands that high in the air, but it sure excites the audience to do that when you have a rest like that. So those are five tips on how to play this Chopin revolutionary etude. Remember, a lot of the work we do with this piece is on accents and lifts. And it's important to get that part into the structure and also to your, your motions when you work at the keyboard. Thanks for watching. Be sure you go over to our companion video where I'll be playing the entire performance of this fairly short piece by Chopin. We'll see you next time on Learn and Love Music.